actually want to share something with you. I think if I'm correct, the first or the second article that I wrote on my website, fontovist.com, was about international roaming with Amiasim. Back then, I was not even aware that Amiasim existed, but I still decided to write an article about them. And that article, well, let's just say I write better articles now. But Amiasim is the largest MVNO out there in Australia. Well, that may be incorrect right now because Optus decided to buy Amiasim late 2020, so it's still an MVNO, but it is part of Optus, but they are known for offering amazing SIM only deals that are also easily accessible to travelers because you can just buy a SIM card at a random store. So in this video, we will be exploring why Amai SIM is so popular, so amazing, and to see if they are the best for you. So it's time to explore and let's just get started, shall we? Huh? It's Odu for Phone Travelers here, where we talk about everything related to traveling with your phone, such as buying a SIM card in Australia, or particularly uh, a Maya SIM SIM card. If videos like this are interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Before we can actually talk about a Maya SIM itself, we need to know about the operator situation here in Australia. I already used the term MVNO, Mobile Virtual Network Operators, but we also need to know about the main operators, which are Telstra, Optus, and Vodafone Australia. Well, the MVNOs, so the Mobile Virtual Network Operators, they use the networks of the main operators and they don't have their own antennas and stuff like that. And in most cases, MVNOs are cheaper than the main operators because they do not have to maintain their own stuff and they usually don't have physical presence such as stores and stuff like that. Well, in the case of Amaya SIM, it is an Optus MVNO, as I mentioned earlier. And in case you're not really aware of the operator situation here in Australia, Telstra is the best in Australia. Optus is in the middle for known for having like the best value for like your money and Vodafone is the worst, but they're also the cheapest. So being on the Optus network is actually a good thing in most cases. Okay, so let's talk about a MySIM. How much will a basic SIM card cost you? Well, you can get an MySIM SIM card for two Australian dollar or AUD. But since we know we're talking about Australia, I will just say dollars from now on. Where can you buy yourself an MySIM SIM card? Where well, you can go to a grocery store, convenience store, gas stations. They are sold in, well, almost everywhere. So it will be very easy for you to find this SIM card. But there's almost one thing that I forgot to mention is that a MySIM is not your typical prepaid SIM card. It is actually a SIM only SIM card. Unlike SIM only in other countries where that means that you are on a plan or on a contract for a year or two years, in the case of a MySIM, you can cancel it whenever you want, which is why I make videos about them because usually I only talk about prepaid SIM cards, but in Australia it's a little bit different. So that's why I include a MySIM. If you want to learn more about how the Australian system works with prepaid and SIM only. I have a video up there where I explain it much more in depth. But for travelers, you can get the Amazon SIM card and you can cancel it without any termination fees and it can be canceled quite easily as well. So I just need to mention that as well. Okay, so how to recharge your Amazon SIM card? The best way to recharge is to do it online on the website or on the Amai SIM app. It's also possible to get recharge vouchers in the major grocery stores. If you top up with the voucher, you have to text the voucher code to the number 568 or you can redeem it on the app or website. And checking your balance can only be done on the app or site. There may be a USD code out there or short code, but unfortunately I'm unaware of it. Plus the app and the website, they work very well. So you're better off using those anyway. Okay, so let's talk about the packages Amaya SIM has to offer. But before we do so, I want to introduce you to the concept called data banking or data rollover that we have here in Australia. And I believe many more operators or many more countries should have something like this, but unfortunately, Australia is kind of unique. There are a few other countries, but still. And it means that if you have unused data or minutes, but in Australia, minutes are usually unlimited anyway. If you have unused data and you renew your plan, you can roll over your unused data allowance from last month to the next month. So let's say if you had a 10 gigabytes of data plan and you only used five and you renew your plan, then you have the new 10 gigabytes of data and your old 15 one, so then you have a data allowance of 15 and then they can go all the way up to 200 gigabytes of data or unlimited depending on the operator. In the case of Amaya SIM, there is no data banking at all for some reason. Even Optus itself has data banking, or in this case, they call it data rollover, up to 50 or 200 gigabytes of data depending on the plan you choose. So 
be aware of this. This is quite a big difference compared to Optus itself and most Optus MV nodes. Okay, so let's talk about the plans. You have several different plans, featuring data, coming with local minutes and SMS, unless it's a data only plan, then well, you get no minutes at all. You also get unlimited minutes to either 28 countries or 42 countries depending on the plan and your plan will be valid for seven days or up to 365 days these plans can be activated on the app or the on my same website so let's talk about the countries where you can call to well unlimited to normal numbers of course not premium numbers but i have to mention this because it's part of it and they are basically grouped into two groups you have the 28 country groups and the 42 countries groups so i'll show you the countries on the screen and i will show you what which groups they are i'll split it into two pictures as well because otherwise it will be hard to read and let's go back to the plans to see well which countries are included with your plan but if this was hard to read make sure to go to ptw.link slash australia desk guide where you can read this in peace as well so do i recommend a mindset well i would say yes and no yes because one they are the most popular mvno out there in australia and for good reason because their plans are very competitive compared to many other mvnos and to the main operators themselves even including optus itself which is quite cool in the case of optus when you are on an mvno your speech won't be throttled or you won't be on a lower quality network unlike with telstra where they have two different networks the retail and the wilson network so that's quite cool the data allowances are nice international call inclusions are nice and yeah on my sim is actually a good option but if you prefer more choice if you want more flexibility in what you can actually choose you may want to consider going with optus itself because they have a lot a lot of different packages and plans you can choose from luckily for you i have an optus export video as well which you can watch up there but you do need to know that if you go with optus itself you'll pay a little bit more because well optus is not envy you know it's one of the main operators and well things are more expensive if you want to consider another envy you know that is almost as good as a MySim, consider going with calls mobile which is a mobile brand by Coles, which is a supermarket chain in Australia, which I also made an export video about, which you can watch up there. So if you're traveling to Australia and you're thinking like, well, which operator should I actually go to? Or what are the options out there? Well, for travelers, there are up to 15 SIM cards you can choose from. If you're living in Australia, there are many more MVNOs out there, like I think 47, if I'm correct. So a total of 50 SIM cards, including the main operators, but most of them are not accessible to travelers because those are contracts and stuff like that. So there are 15 SIM cards available for travelers. And luckily for you, I have a complete, complete Australia SIM card buying guide, which you can watch up there. But if you prefer to read or want to even get into more of the details of what these operators have to offer, make sure to go to ptw.link slash Australia desk guide. You can read my in-depth guide about buying a SIM card in Australia so that you can easily compare the operators and see which one is the best for you but you can also watch my explore playlist of all the australian operators in this playlist up here well the, not the playlist just the eye up there but <laughs> i think you got what i meant once again i'm out of a photo of this where we talk about everything related to traveling with your phone such as local sim cards local sim card reviews international roaming speed tests just everything related to traveling with your phone and if you always want to buy the best sim card or the cheapest sim card in the country you're visiting it doesn't have to be australia it can be any place around the world because i talk about sim cards all over the world make sure to subscribe to this channel because well i talk about that stuff all the time so you can save a lot of money compared to international roaming on the screen you will see some related cards make sure to like this video and i will see you in the next one bye bye